What's this got to do with me? your mouth, Shelly. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Evolution isn't an opinion, it's fact. And that is your opinion. <laughs> the number one misconception about the theory of evolution is that humans and apes and monkeys are somehow direct descendants of each other. They're not, but we'll get to that later. The second most prevalent misconception is that the theory of evolution seeks to dismiss one's belief in God, to somehow prove that a person's beliefs are misguided or in error. In reality, the theory of evolution simply seeks to explain the wide diversity of life on the planet. It can't and it doesn't explain where that life came from, nor the origins of the universe. Unlike religion, which is subject to faith, a doctrine of some sort, and a belief system, the theory of evolution is subject to scientific testing, data, and the acceptance of that data. In other words, there's no church of the evolutionist. One doesn't believe, nor should one believe, in the theory of evolution. Huh? Like electricity, it has been proven scientifically. One doesn't believe in electricity. Because it's been proven scientifically, it exists whether one believes in it or not. I can't tell you where the tension between church and evolution escalated. I can tell you that it probably started with Charles Darwin's publishing of his book on origin of the species, but that debate was short-lived. I can tell you that the debate never really went away, and the monkey trial, or Scopes trial, is a point in history that served to shine a light on church and evolution, though not in the way you might think. Here, watch this. In 1925, the state of Tennessee brought a substitute teacher to trial for teaching the evolution of man to his high school students. The Scopes trial, or monkey trial, was made famous by the play and movie Inherit the Wind. In reality, it was a challenge to the Butler Act, which infused Christian religious beliefs into school teachings of science and evolution. Though Mr. Scopes lost and was ordered to pay a $100 fine, the trial both set science and religion at odds while asserting the separation of religious beliefs from science education. Definitely not. Evolution is the process of genetic change of some in a population over a period of time that results in a new and separate species of organisms that is able to survive better in a given environment. In other words, in other words evolution, evolution results, results in a new, in a new species, species through genetic, through genetic change, change, such as mutations, 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 that can survive better in a given environment. environment. Charles Darwin was born in 1809 in Shrewsbury, England. He grew up wealthy and after a brief stint at medical school, he eventually joins the HMS Beagle as its naturalist. Boarding the HMS Beagle in 1831 at the age of 22, Darwin sails to South America as the ship's naturalist, exploring and identifying plants and animals for England. From 1832 to 1834, Darwin explores the east coast of South America where he finds the remains of giant sloths, but no living sloths. 
He does note the similarity of the sloth and the capybara, a giant rodent living today. In 1835, Darwin spent some time exploring the Galapagos Islands and working on his very young theory of evolution by natural selection. It is here he writes extensive notes on the island's finches and tortoises. By 1836, Darwin returns to England, writes, gets married, and has children. On November 24, 1859, his book On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection is published. He continues to publish and write, dying on April 19, 1882, at the age of 73. So the theory of evolution by natural selection serves to show that present-day species came from previous species. Kind of like you being the result of genetics that have been passed along through all of your ancestors back through time. The theory states that there are countless common ancestors to present-day species. So all present-day elephants have a common ancestor and all present-day ferns have a common ancestor and all present-day trout have a common ancestor. In other words, ultimately, all life has a common ancestor. Again, it's like you and your cousin have a common ancestor, your grandparents. The evidence for the process of evolution all serves to prove common ancestry of life. Here are five of the most basic evidences for evolution. Every one of the purple arrows represents a common ancestor that has since gone extinct. It is the common ancestor of the primate whose line goes up from the green or red dot and the primate directly to its right. So, Anthropoidea would be the family of common ancestors between monkeys and gibbons. Hominidinae is the family of common ancestors between gorillas and bonobos. And Homo is the common ancestor family between Erectus and modern humans. When we refer to a common ancestor, we mean that the organism shares genetics and traits with both the organism on the left and the right. Therefore, a common ancestor between monkeys and apes might show a lack of a visible tail. However, the skeleton would have tail bones, like our coccyx, for example. I said earlier we'd be getting back to the misconception that monkeys and apes are directly related to humans. We are now back to it. Let's zoom in on the red dot. The red dot represents the point or primate at which chimpanzees and humans went their separate evolutionary ways. You can see that African apes, down to monkeys, left our evolutionary line even earlier. The red arrow is pointing to the evolutionary path that modern bonobos and chimpanzees took to get to where they are today. Pan is our closest living relative because the genetics along these two lines is very similar. Once the change in genetic structure reaches Pan and Hamanini, the organisms are now on very different evolutionary paths and much more distantly related. So you see, the great apes are not in a direct line to modern humans. They took their own evolutionary paths many millions of years ago. Our closest relatives are Homo erectus and Homo sapiens neanderthal, which can be found along this line. New Cubans, New Cubans. Mm. And I say no, 
trying to do somebody go ahead. I just let the music come from my soul So all of my people 